sophomore year is kind of when I started drinking in the mornings a lot more. I did this secretly and at first it was not really a red flag to me and let me tell you why. <sighs> All right, hello everybody. I filmed this intro and as I'm editing right now, watching it back, it was very rambly, didn't get to the point, so I decided to film it again. I wanted to make this video to reduce the damn stigma. I am 22, I'm a senior in college, and the college drinking environment for a long time allowed me to hide my problems in plain sight and allowed me to kind of justify that my behavior was okay. I felt alone for so long because I thought no one knew what I was going through. I thought no one else was having trouble moderating their alcohol. I wanted to create this video to prove to people who may be going through something similar as me that they are not alone. So we're just going to start from the beginning to kind of give you the best picture of my drinking history that I can. I can't exactly remember what sparked me to start drinking, but pretty soon by junior year that was all me and my friends were doing on the weekends. My thing has always been once I start drinking I cannot stop, so I can go days without drinking just fine. But if I start drinking, there's no telling if I'm going to make it home safely that night or be talking to an undercover cop outside of a liquor store. That did happen to me freshman year of college. I started blacking out regularly in high school and I didn't really know exactly what it was. Like I kind of thought blacking out was a normal thing because I had never drank before. I thought it was just normal to not remember parts of your night or normal to drink until you can't remember and I soon found out that that wasn't the case and that wasn't what my friends were doing. They were drinking to be social and to have a good time. My blacking out really started to affect my friendships and affect my relationships in high school. I would black out and people would have to take care of me and that was just not something that I am proud of and so I started to become very concerned with what other people thought of me and I would get so upset when I would wake up and realize that I blacked out again and I would have so much anxiety over the things I did or what I said and I could see how it was affecting my friendships and my relationships. The days that I would wake up and I couldn't remember anything from the night before and my friends t tried to tell me things that I did I would just kind of either tell them that I didn't want to know or I would not listen and I thought that by if I didn't know what I had done or if I wasn't hearing what I had done then it didn't happen and that's kind of the unhealthy thing that I kept doing. So they would sit me down, this happened multiple times and they would talk to me about my drinking and just kind of have many interventions with me and I would promise them that I would moderate and I would control my drinking and they wouldn't have to take care of me anymore. And I would do it and I wouldn't black out at that party. I wouldn't black out at maybe the next couple parties, but there was always that next time. There was always the next time that I did black out and that they did have to take care of me. It was so frustrating to me because I wanted to moderate and I obviously didn't want to keep blacking out. I didn't want to keep embarrassing myself, but I just couldn't and that was the frustrating part about it. Even when I could, the party was no fun because I was constantly thinking about the drinking that I couldn't really focus on the socializing aspect. Then college was right around the corner and I was so excited. I was excited to go to a place where no one really knew me. College was a time to kind of reinvent yourself, whatever reputation we had in high school. I was convinced that this new environment was going to help me and I wouldn't black out anymore. I blacked out more times freshman year than probably all of my years combined. Freshman year of college was kind of when alcohol started to not become a social thing for me and started to become a way to calm my nerves. I developed, and I think I've always had, a little bit of social anxiety. I would drink a lot more when I knew I was going to be meeting new people because I had this idea in my mind that in order for me to be fun and to be outgoing and be more confident I needed to have alcohol in my system and so it became something that I was doing not just to socialize with people but to kind of cope with feelings that I was having and I started 
going to parties where I didn't really know anyone just because I knew I was going to be able to drink. It got to the point where I became unable to be excited about anything that didn't involve alcohol. Then sophomore year, I moved into a house and I moved into a house with seven other girls and most of them were older. They were all turning 21 that year and so alcohol was just readily available to me when I wanted it. Sophomore year is kind of when I started drinking in the mornings a lot more. I did this secretly and at first it was not really a red flag to me and let me tell you why. When I first started drinking in the mornings, it was when I knew I was going to a day party that day. I justified it because I thought I'm going to be drinking in a couple hour hours anyways, why not start now? This was the vicious cycle that I sort of fell into and I noticed really picked up sophomore year. I would drink a lot at a party, black out, wake up in the morning and then be very ashamed and very guilty and have such anxiety over what I did the night before and so to combat that shame and that anxiety and that guilt I would drink in the mornings. I thought that was the only solution. My addictive brain, you're always finding ways to justify your behavior and, and find ways to say, oh, this isn't that bad. So my addictive brain and my justifications were, I just don't want to have a hangover, you know? So I'm going to drink a little and then I won't have a hangover the rest of the day. The idea of quitting drinking never really crossed my mind because I wasn't even of legal age to drink. That's kind of why I never really wanted to accept that I had a drinking problem was because I wasn't even legal yet. I began to not even really enjoy parties for the social aspect of them. The second I started feeling buzzed or a little tipsy, the gears in my brain would start going and all I could think about was how much more alcohol am I going to drink, where am I going to get my next shot, where am I going to get my next drink, and that's all I would be thinking about and so it was hard for me to actually immerse myself in the college experience and in hanging out with people and socializing with people because all I would be thinking about was drinking. My way of thinking was so normal to me that I began to think it was just a normal thing for everyone. If I told my friends that I had a limit to how much I was going to drink that day, if I reached that limit, I would obviously usually want to keep drinking so I would sneak extra drinks or sneak extra shots. Because I was doing it so often, my brain was justifying that it was okay. Throughout all this time, I didn't want to quit because I wasn't even 21 yet and so I was looking forward to turning 21 and going out to bars. I remember I specifically sat down with myself one day before, a couple, like a week before I turned 21 and I basically I said to myself, you're too old for this, like stop. And I was going into my 21st year feeling like I was going to get this under control. Long story short, on my 21st birthday, don't remember much of it at all. The fact that I couldn't remember the thing that I had been looking forward to for months just really weighed on me, I think. Now that I was 21, I could find any excuse I wanted to go get alcohol. It was never really an alone thing. At the beginning of the year, I would always try and get others to drink with me, but as the year went on, it started to become something that I did by myself. I had a lot of times at the beginning of my junior year when I would be in that vicious cycle, wake up, drink, and I never wanted to drink so much that people knew I was drinking in the mornings. So for a lot of this, a lot of the time, I actually drank just enough, or so I thought, to make me not visibly drunk. And I thought that I was hiding it from my roommates pretty well and hiding it from my boyfriend and my friends well. And I, I think I did for a while. Junior year was when drinking really began to affect my mental health and my classes and my work. I would drink in the mornings and then not make it to class or call in sick to work. And I just, I think I could say that I was depressed in that time of my life. Going to counseling and seeing someone about my drinking was something that I even told my friends in high school that I was gonna do. And it took me until junior year of college to actually do it. Going to that first appointment was the hardest thing that I've ever done. And having to sit there and fill out a form, why are you here? and admit to this form and to this therapist that I might have a drinking problem, that was so hard for me to do. When I got in there, I kind of just told him everything since high school. Everything that I'm telling you right now, I told him. And going into counseling, it was never my intention to quit. I kind of went in there with the intention because I wanted to know why I couldn't handle my alcohol. I, I thought my counselor was going to be able to teach me how to handle it and how to not black out. That's what I thought he was going to 
do for me. And I wanted to just be able to drink normally and be able to stop after one. Keep in mind, no one knew that I was trying to go sober when I got sober, except for my boyfriend. He was the only one who knew. No one else knew. I didn't tell anyone. I was too ashamed to tell people. I thought that no one else was having this problem of drinking to oblivion and not being able to control it. I thought that I was so alone. This idea was kind of reinforced when my counselor was like, I think you should join this drop-in group for students with substance abuse problems. And I was like, great, that sounds good. I went to it and it was an eight week long program. And the entire eight weeks I went, I was the only student who showed up. That kind of got me feeling even more alone. I fell into this kind of new cycle where I would take a week or two weeks off of drinking and feel really, really good. My brain would convince me that, okay, it's time to like try drinking again I think after you spent two weeks not drinking I think you're gonna be able to handle it and so I'd go those two weeks and then I would drink and then I would get in the shame cycle again and I drink in the mornings and then I would go see my therapist and admit to him that I did that and then he would motivate me to stop drinking again for a while I ended up going the longest I'd ever been without drinking it was like Thanksgiving to Christmas I realized when editing that I was sugarcoating this story so I'm gonna tell you what actually happened over Christmas break so that you can sort of see the full extent that my problem had reached basically I made it those four weeks between Thanksgiving and Christmas without drinking and so I thought I could handle it I drank at a Christmas Eve party with my family and friends long story short blacked out then I hid a bottle of gin in my bedroom and started drinking that the next morning and I got so drunk that I could not say goodbye to my cousins, my aunt or my uncle who were staying with us for Christmas and who were leaving that morning and so that is kind of when my family was involved. I could see that they were very worried and they could see the extent that my problem had gotten to. So that kind of was the motivator for me to take a step back and reflect and to really think about giving up drinking for good. The thing that kind of convinced me to quit altogether was I did this journal entry exercise. It was a reflection on 2019 because it was at the beginning of 2020 and it asked you to write down the things that were taking up most of your mental space and energy. What thing, if you eliminated it, would make you the most happy? I sort of realized that all areas of my life were being affected by alcohol. My friendships, my work, my class, everything in my life, alcohol was just making worse. So that's what kind of convinced me to quit altogether and quit for the foreseeable future because I knew I wasn't being my best self. I became depressed and I became not focused on school, not focused on work and just only focused on drinking and I didn't like the spiral that I was going down. So that's mm. kind of why I went in there and went into my counseling appointment and just told him, I think I'm ready to quit altogether. My first time that I tried going sober was end of January and I made it 40 days. And that time I felt my best, but I was angry. I would stay in, I wouldn't go to parties or events because I didn't want to be tempted. I, I began to get very lonely and very angry, like why can't I drink? And so I think those feelings led me to drink the next time. So I went to my friend's birthday and I told my boyfriend, I was like, I think I'm ready. It's been 40 days. I think I'll, I'll handle it. And I convinced myself, I was so sure that I was going to be able to. So we went to a brewery. I feel like I'm saying that wrong. Brewery, 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 brewery. We went to a brewery. I told my boyfriend and I was like, I'm gonna have two beers. Um, as you can imagine, I did not stop at those two beers. I went home and started chugging anything I could find. That next day, I was so ashamed that I had ruined my streak. I fell into a deep drinking fit, if you will. I drank secretly for the next two weeks. It got to the point where I didn't even want to drink some mornings. I wanted to be productive and I wanted to have a good day. It was like I was physically pulled to drink it if I if it was on my mind and if I saw it. The last time that I drank was March 18th, 2020. Six months ago, about six months ago. I had an online final that day. I drank that morning and my boyfriend picked me up. He noticed I was drunk and he gave me an ultimatum basically and said, if you cannot commit to trying to be sober again, then I can't do this anymore. And that was very valid. He offered to do a sober streak with me and get me back to those 40 days and I think that was a really good motivator for me and really was that initial push that I needed to get back on track.
on March 18th, I drank my last sip of alcohol and I have not had any since and it has been a journey. First two months of me being sober, I didn't tell anyone that I was sober, I didn't tell anyone I was going sober. I would just make up excuses as to why I wasn't drinking. I'd be like, oh, I'm on antibiotics or I just don't feel like drinking because I was still so ashamed. I didn't want anyone to know. It was quarantine at this point and my roommates were, everyone went home for a little bit and then my roommates were coming back and they, two of them came back and they were like, let's drink tonight. And I was like, I cannot spend the next however long of quarantine, however long this is gonna be, I cannot spend it coming up with excuses to these two girls of why I'm not drinking. I just need to tell them. So I told them that I was quitting drinking for good and they were so supportive and took it so well. And I think I was so afraid to tell people because I wasn't sure of what their reaction was gonna be. But the fact that they took it so well, I was like, that was not bad at all. And that kind of inspired me to just tell everyone. I just wrote out an Instagram post about my journey and put it on Instagram. The amount of support and love that I got after posting that was unreal. I felt so grateful to have such supportive friends and supportive family in my life and it really just motivated me to keep going. It was kind of a scary feeling because now that everyone knew what I was going through and now that everyone knew that I was sober, it almost, I feel like it's keeping me accountable now. These past six months have been crazy, they've been hard, but they've also been the most rewarding. I've gained so much more confidence than ever before. I'm more confident now going to things than I was when I was drinking. You know, I thought I needed to drink to be social and be fun and have that confidence when I know that that's not the case. So if I have any advice for anyone who is going through something similar and feels like they're alone, it would be don't wait until the right time. You know, there's always gonna be another event to drink at. And if you keep waiting and saying, I'm gonna wait to give up drinking until after this event or after this, you're gonna be waiting for the rest of your life. It would have been so much easier for me to deal with this problem after college and just continue to go with the flow and to drink with my friends. You just need to know that there's never going to be a right time. The right time is now. There's never a better time to focus on your health and focus on yourself than right now. Um, another thing I would say is that it's trial and error. It takes time. You're going to want to quit drinking and then the first event you go to, the first house party, the first bar you go to, it's not going to be easy. I've had to learn through trial and error about what I like to go to and what I don't like to go to now that I'm sober. I have not become one of the people that's like, alcohol is the devil's juice. I will still go to things with my friends that involve alcohol. I will still have a fun time, but I'm just learning how to have fun without it. I promise that the more events you go to, the easier it will be to go to them and to not drink and the more confident you will be in your decision. If you want to know more, I do have a lot more tips and tricks and just more of my story on my blog, which is funshipblog.com. I also started an Instagram page for the blog, which is just daily sobriety motivation and just wellness motivation. I'll leave all of that in the description bar below. If you need a friend, if you need someone to lean on, if you feel like you're alone, if you feel like no one knows what you're going through, I promise you someone does. So please DM me on Instagram, leave me a comment, contact me through my blog. I will be there to help you as best as I can. And I promise you there is such a big community of sober, supportive people waiting for you to just join them. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It's gonna really help to support me in my YouTube journey and I'm so excited to bring this sort of content to YouTube and talk about all of the other things I'm passionate about which is health, fitness, lifestyle, just wellness. So if you want to see more from me don't forget to subscribe and I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.